What's going on, everybody? Judd Bruden here with Asphalt Kingdom, and we are here for another jam, and I've got literally, like, the two most favorite people in my life right here. My wife is in the other room. Don't let her hear that, but really excited to be here with you guys. I know we've got, you know, some good jamming to do here, a little freestyle jam, and hopefully shed some light and give people some, some direction, be plugged into the right things that allow people to really feel kind of that unstoppable feeling that Mr. Hess talks about, unstoppable. So with, uh, without any further delay, here we go. We are gonna discuss about what lies ahead, what actually lies ahead. It's been a, a wild year so far, lots going on. Um, quite a few things going on, we'll say, definitely in the, uh, in the media, in the, uh, in, the, in the house, at schools or schools that are closed, workspace, customers' mindsets, your mindset, man, there's a lot spinning around right now. And sometimes it may feel as though you're drowning. So hopefully we can help throw that life preserver to you and, and you can uh, get afloat and let's power forward. Brian, I'd love to chat with you and, and hear your input as, as what you think is going to be taking place here over the next you know, the balance of this season rolling into January 2022, what do you see uh, happening here from now until 2022 as we engage into the new year as it relates to the industry that we're in, in the paving industry? Yeah, I think, uh, number one, I would say uh, I, I've never seen anything like this with regard to the finish of a year uh, being so far out in front of us, like, you know, in July, we started looking at, you know, how much bandwidth do we have? And, and so we started communicating that to customers like, Hey, this is not a sales pitch. This is real. Like we have, there's such incredible demand on the industry that the ability to get things completed is more challenging uh, than ever before, because, uh, there are increases in prices, customers willing to overpay to get things done quickly. Um, you know, contractors having more opportunity than they've ever had before. And so I think the key for people in the industry, number one, is to realize the opportunity that's in front of you uh, from a growth standpoint, from a you know capacity standpoint. How do you get more done every single day? Those little tweaks that are out there that can help you uh, really stay out, get out and stay out in front of uh, the pile that's in front of you. Uh, operations becomes one of the most uh, important parts of your business. It always is, but now more than ever, because you've probably got a list of work. It's how many days do you have remaining and how can you get things done? And I think, uh, you know, it is so important for you to realize that the momentum you carry through the end of this year, if you can get this right, it's going to carry you extremely strong into 2022. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're capitalizing on every opportunity that you have out there to be able to grab those customers that may not be able to have a solution that maybe you wouldn't have been able to get before, right? You might be a small seal coating guy or a smaller paving company that's now dealing with a larger customer that has no ability to get their work done by anybody else. So it's really looking at these closing months from a 30,000 foot view and being intelligent about the moves that you make and the marketing that you're doing and those people that you're following up on, check in on those proposals that you might've sent out you know, forever ago that you think are dead. Uh, those people might be coming back to you because they have no other option of where to go. So I think it's an incredible opportunity and a, and a great chance for every business owner to look at their company and really figure out uh, how to dial in the operation side of things to make the most of the rest of the year. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. You know, Brian, you mentioned something about prices, you know, increasing and, and, and I think just in general, there's, you know, is hyperinflation actually taking place And Lee, I know you're in the, you know, you, you deal with a lot of shipping, a lot of logistics in your businesses and maybe you can give a little bit of insight as to what's taking place right now as it relates to inflation in regards to freight and giving a heads up to the audience that, you know, may not be very sure where things are pointed as it relates to price increases. Yeah. So, I mean, presumably like the audience that we're dealing with, like contractors, um, you know, they talk in jobs and materials, right. And, and equipment and supplies and, you know, it's one thing, it, it, you know, Brian was talking about balancing logistics and, you know, planning your year to get it done. It's another that, 
you get there and you don't have what you need to finish it, or you've got a massive, you know, quarter million dollar job that you've got to get 20 grand worth of lines striped and you can't get paint to do it. Um, so, I mean, the way that I, I mean, the, the first is, I mean, it's a good problem to have, to have lots of work in front of you. So be grateful for that if, if that's you. Um, but the second point is, I mean, you know, going to where Brian's going a little bit deeper into what Brian was saying. Um, if you're looking at the logistics and you're looking at what the rest of your year looks like, you should probably be looking at what your consumables are, what equipment and tools you're going to need well in advance and make sure that you're securing them. Um, what people, you know, don't really think about is that a lot of tools or components for tools or inputs for your equipment are coming from Asia, whether it's China, Japan, or one of the Asian areas. And if you need a line striper and the line striper supplier is on back order for this part, you're not getting that machine, you know, and if you need that machine to get the job done, that's your, you know, that's your Achilles heel, right? And your supplier and your tools and um, whether it's, you know, whether it's ass, whether it's sealer, whether it's crack sealant, whether it's um, line paint or whether it's tools or equipment, if you need something to get the job done and you don't have it, that's a problem. So, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, look at what you've got for the rest of the year, break it down into services, look at the tools, equipment, and kind of the, the critical parts that you can't do without, um, and make sure that you've got a plan to, to get those in advance. Um, you know, if you, if cash flow is tight and you don't have the cash in the bank, um, cash is cheap right now from banks, you know, capital is at the lowest price ever, you know, get a line of credit or, or borrow or whatever else to, to bring that stuff in and don't be caught, you know, two months down the road, um, with a, you know, a, say a crappier finish than what you could have because you didn't have paint or you didn't have a tool or this or that. So that's kind of the first thing I would say there. Um, you know, what's driving it? Um, I think there's, I think when COVID hit, you know, we saw a temporary pause where a lot of companies hit the pause, you know, everybody hit the pause button and said, whoa, where's this going to go? And that pause caused, you know, factories and suppliers to just, everyone did the same thing, slow down, stop making stuff. And that, you know, it's, it's easy to slow down and stop making stuff. I mean, Anybody can hit a, hit, a, hit a switch and put their production to 50%, right? Not very hard to do. I think what we've seen this year is that that mixed with, you know, a lot of um, businesses that were closed, like restaurant and service sector, everybody coming on board, you know, obviously government stimulus just put a, just lit a fire under the economy. And what you're seeing is everyone react the opposite way. So that, that overreaction, I believe is causing an extreme shortage in containers. We don't have enough, we don't have enough trucks, you know, or, or logistics equipment to make up for that, you know, and, and that's what's caused, you know, rates to basically go through the roof. Like to give you guys an idea, we deal with a lot of, uh, you know, imports from Asia and containers have gone from 3,500 bucks door to door from Shanghai to Toronto to 24,000. Um, you know, a container, you know, in, inside of 12 months. That's, it, it's crazy. Like it's, you know, you're talking six, five, 600%, 700% increases. <clears throat> and um, those no impacts, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, th those impacts haven't really fully made it through the supply chain to consumer yet. So you're seeing some increases and, you know, when we talk about inflation, it's starting to become clear, you know, in some areas. Um, but it's not fully, like it's, it, it certainly hasn't flushed out. And I think if you have the chance to, you know, if, if there's major equipment that you want to buy this year, we use cars as an example. Um, cars are a lot more expensive right now than what they were a year ago. I mean, anywhere from 15, 25%, depending on what you're looking at. Um, that, that's a lot. I mean, if you're looking at some major purchase for your business, uh, you're going to buy a power paver or, or something like that, or whatever it might be. 25% on a, on anything is it's a significant amount to go up. So I guess I would say be mindful of what your needs are, you know, and if you've got extra cash, it's a good way to deploy it and making sure that you've got, you know, supplies and, and products and equipment covered. Um, and if you don't consider borrowing to, to bridge the gap, because 
I don't think that these are going to be short-term things. I think we're likely in for, you know, another six to 18 months of this. And, and I guess the other thing I would say, I don't want to go down a COVID. Uh, I don't want to down, go down the, the road of COVID here, but nobody really knows when life goes back to normal and what normal means. So, you know, with that, there's going to be instability and, um, you know, be, pre be prepared for it. If you're, you're better off, if you're the guy that's got, the, you know, got the ability to do the job, than if you're the guy that, you know, waited to the last minute and is showing up at a paint store to find out that you can't get paint to do the job that you committed to. So be prepared. It's, it's, it's so, it's so true. We're seeing it at, a, you know, in our company at Asphalt Kingdom, what we're noticing is that there's this, this, new rush right now in the month of August as fall's approaching. And we're seeing this rush where people are coming in and, and buying a lot of equipment and supplies. They're literally stocking up rain. And a lot of people, we have a new funding partner that we're working with called ClickLease and the approval rates are awesome. So even if the credit's shitty, people are still being approved for it. And they're very, very reasonable too. But I think what you're hitting on a, on a very good point is that right now you have the opportunity to buy at lesser price than what you will experience. There's no doubt that you will, that you will experience going into spring of 2022, no doubt. And the facts are right now, after this, as we've gone through the season, we're August now, so you technically should be more flush with cash right now than you would be rolling into March. And so if you're going to make some moves to scale your business and to be able to go into the new year, finish strong, but go into the new year with some really good power punch, you should really be prepping for that now versus later. Because as you said, Lee, it hasn't all that shipping uh, increase in price and so on and so forth hasn't trickled down the line yet to a lot of the stock that's still sitting on shelves and or in warehouses at previous cost pricing. Well, and I want to add to that too. I mean, if you're, so, I mean, you know, there's two sides of this. One is if you're, if your business is fully booked to the year end and you know, you're not going to be able to get every ounce of work done. Well, then the focus this year is on yields and, you know, make the best bottom line you can of it. Right. Which is, you know, negotiate in and buy bulk stuff, like get what you need to get the job done. And if you can save a few bucks now, you're probably going to get a better result in negotiating than you will in six months from now. Um, and on the flip side, if you're not full and you're sitting here trying to basically fill up your schedule, this is a great, this is greatest time is, this is as great of a time as any to start dialing all your proposals, telling them, look, now's the time you have capacity and it's going to get more expensive next year. Like you win, there's a way to approach this, whether or not you're, you know, completely booked, um, or whether you're still booking, you know, and there's a win on either angle. But if you're, if you are fully booked, yeah, hundred percent at this point, you know, you're going to need the materials and supplies. So it's a game of numbers. If you can, if you can shave 5% off of a, a half a million dollar spend, that's $25,000 to year end. You're going to save, right? So why not do it? Yeah. You know, Brian, I would add to that, man, that, you know, the whole time you guys were thinking uh, or talking there, I was thinking that, you know, when it comes down to resources to get these supplies, the places that you go to get business, if you don't have it, um, this is a perfect example of how valuable your network is, how, how valuable the people you're connected to and the resources you're able to tap into really are, because, you know, the, the group of people that, you know, I interact with the most uh, that they, they are finding ways to get stuff done, right? Versus I interact with a lot of people online or people DM me asking for help and finding these things that we're talking about, you know, maybe, maybe it's paint or supplies or equipment or whatever it is. And so I think it's more important than ever to, to be evaluating who you're connecting to and how much time are you investing into those relationships? Because those things uh, not just from an equipment supplies and access to things standpoint, but also your network is going to be the difference between you being able to stay focused and mentally tough through this and, and keep your eye on the prize and really advance forward uh, and maybe drift off out into, you know, wherever everybody else lies uh, confused about what to do. So I think it's important to realize that as you're going through these things, do not go through it alone, man, find, find your tribe and find the people 
that can really help you and get you pointed in the right direction. That's, that's huge. And you know, I, I was on the TCS call, top contract school call last week. And the call was a really interesting one. It wasn't necessarily about the framework associated with scaling and growing your business, but it had every ounce of energy and, and brightness, a part of that to help people feel as though they weren't in the dark in a fetal position, not knowing what direction to go. There was a unit, there was a team that was together and, and speaking about eliminating the fear, disconnecting from media and social media and feeds that are basically feeding you a bunch of, I'll call it the cauldron of pus, you know what I mean? Just the shit. And, and that call, that call for me, I left that call feeling, you know, motivated and inspired. And, and I had direction in a bright environment because let's face it, surrounding us right now is not a lot of great, bright, positive energy. No, it's not. It takes hard work to find the good news these days. And it takes a lot of focus and discipline to stay in that channel and to redirect some of the people that are genuinely and generally positive people. Uh, everybody is going through that time where they're like, holy shit, man, what is going to happen here? Uh, you know, we all have those moments where we, you know, what is ahead, right? And, and rest assured, guys, you surround yourself with the right people. You get up every day and you do all the right things. It's impossible to get the wrong result. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. Um, you know, last year when we were going through all this, I, I, I kind of joked around, but I was, I was serious when people said, there's going to be a recession. I said, that's great. We're just not going to participate. Like, you know, the recession is a word that's spread on the news, man. That is not reality. Recession for the country doesn't mean squat to you. If you are pushing hard enough, you're surrounded by the right people, you're plugged in, your processes are right. You're getting up every day, doing all the right things. Doesn't mean anything to you. It's an opportunity. And so don't be sold the story that is so often said to us like, oh man, what, what, what lies ahead? Opportunity, friends, is what's ahead if you are able to seize it. But if you want to listen to the stuff that's on the news and, and how there's going to be a recession and the uncertainty of this, look at ways you can capitalize from it. And you will. If you look for opportunities of why you can make excuses, you'll find those too. So I would, I would say one Couldn't agree more. the recession topic is um, I would replace recession with transition. Right. Whenever there's whenever there's a recession, um, you know, or a drop, it means that there's dramatic change. That's all it is. It's change, right? You know, the, the way that we measure change because we base a lot economically is just change in value. You know, a market dropped thirty percent. There was a change in value. That just means that you know, people for whatever reason don't have a lot of confidence in the future of the current way of doing things, and it's going to transition. Right. So I think that and one thing that's fantastic about transitions is they bring, you know, to those that aren't afraid to look at it, you know, in this, don't get me wrong. I don't want to put across that this isn't painful because they, they are for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, they're painful to think about, but transitions are also great. I mean, if you're, if you're the type of person that looks at it and, you know, looks at, how things are changing and what the impacts might be or how things have changed, you know, if it's, if it's after and what the impacts are, um, you have the ability to, to build and react to that. And you can either, you know, plan for it by looking ahead or wait till it happens and, and change when it hits you. Right. So, I mean, you know, it, uh, for me, the context is today, a great deal of my business is reliant on imported components from Asia right? That's not, it's not what I chose, but it's what the realities are of what component, the components that we need and where they're made. But the long term is, you know, and if I look at, if I want to give everyone a, a 10 year view of my, you know, of my vision of North America, say 10 to 20, that's going to change. You know, the writing's on the wall that there's an appetite for, you know, manufacturing locally. Global trade is, is not, it's proven that for whatever reason, and, and this is, you know, for better or for worse, it doesn't matter whether I like it or not. Um, generally, people have an appetite to see things made locally and less dependence on, um, you know, other countries and globalization. So I can choose to like that or not, but the realities are 
is that that's going to lead to a change in, in, in supply chains, a change in where things are made. Um, you know, it's going to be a big change to consumers. Consumers are going to pay more. But that's a reality that we all, we, we got to play ball with, right? It, it's going to go where it's going to go. And when I'm going back to earlier, where I mentioned, you know, recession versus transition, this could, this could lead to a recession, but ultimately it's just a transition. It's one thing changing, you know, from this to another. And, you know, my challenge, you know, in my businesses is to read that and to, you know, and to react to it and to, you know, make a plan that's going to allow us to, um, to go through those transitions, hopefully as smoothly as possible and with, with as little turbulence as possible. But, um, it's something I think we all got to embrace, right? Transition is not something to be afraid of. It's something to, to get in front of, to think about, you know, and to, to plan for. So I think I'd, I, I didn't mean to ramble on that recession piece, but it triggered. And I think that's, that's an important point to think about. I mean, don't sit scared about what might happen. Just think about what, think about what it might look like and, and build a picture in your head and then relate that to what you think you need to do in your life and in your business to, you know, to make the changes needed to prepare for it. Man, that is, that is very, very powerful. And it's, it's something, you know, I, I hear people speaking about being afraid to age. <laughs> it's just a longer transition if you look at it over a whole life, but you can look at aging over a year if you want, right? And it, the reality of it is we're dealing with things right now that are what we choose to deal with. It's literally whatever we choose to deal with. If we wake up in the morning and we're not connected to Facebook and we're not turning on the news and we're not speaking to people that drag us down into the cauldron of pus and you, you are literally connected to the framework and the goal that you're wanting to achieve in your life, well, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, like Brian stated, it's going to be hard not to get closer to the goal. And, you know, with, with that being said, I know that, you know, there's... There's this time that's left in our season, which we discussed that there's this time left to be able to achieve a lot of goals. Like it's not too late. It's, it's today's, you know, we're, we're dealing with the third week of August and it's not too late. There's still plenty of time. And Brian, I know that you have a lot of bids, a lot of quotes out. You've got your team at the pavement group rocking and you guys have grown just enormously since you've started. It's this year, third year. Is that right? Yeah, third full season, yeah. Third full season. And I mean, you guys are just crushing it. And so for guys that are out there that are just, you know, starting out or maybe first, second year in business, let's just say, what would be your advice to to that, that particular um, person? I, I think the most important part of building a business in today's world, man, is, is getting people to know you. Uh, that is, you know, if I could go back and, and start over at the payment group, I would have done that bigger, faster. Uh, so, you know, just having a social media presence, networking in your community. If you're a local business, you know, making sure that people know you, make sure your, your company is branded well, it's recognizable. They understand what you as an individual leading that company or being the face of that company, what you actually stand for. I believe that in today's world, as, as technology has allowed the world to get smaller, people are starting to have an expectation of knowing the people they do business with via, you know, influence online, social media, things like that. And I use, you know, a couple of big companies as an example, you know, home advisor is, is one that I, I use all the time. I, I hope someday the CEO of home advisor calls me and says, good tip, man. But you know, a lot of people in our industry have a negative view of home advisor. And I often say like, I don't know who the CEO of home advisor is, but my guess is he's probably a pretty decent guy or it's a pretty nice girl, right? And if that person was more well-known, if they were speaking to an audience every day and they were talking about what they believe in and how they run their company and the core values in which they try to deliver, I think it would have a different message. And I think that that's a, that's a lesson for the guys that are starting out, man. Get out there and talk to people about what you're all about and who you are and what you stand for and why you started this business and connect to that thing that gets you moving every day and shout it from the mountaintops, man. You, you have to be an evangelist for your cause in today's world. And when you do that, 
Uh, you can stand out from the competition and people want to do business with those people that they like and they're willing to pay more. Dude, I do business with all my friends and I never ask what the price is. You know, I, I don't, you know, negotiate hard against my friends. I want to do business with them and support their businesses, right? And, and that is the same. Those people become your friends, man. And so uh, building that following, building the attention, telling your story, and doing it as many times as you possibly can, it's, it's undefeated in the world of business. You know, the people that do it and do it well, it's undefeated. And that is, uh, you know, that's just a fact. And so those people who are starting out, um, that's the best thing they can possibly do. It's awesome, man. Um, you know, I know you have to jump off onto your top contractor school elite call with the group over there that you do. You do it every week now, right? Every week, more or less, yep. you're doing calls. Yeah. And you speak about a lot of things on those calls as well. And anybody that wants to pop into top contractor school, go to topcontractorschool.com and check it out. And it's definitely, it's, it's a portal of light and brightness and a lot of structure and direction uh, to help you scale and grow. Um, in, I just want to touch on one last thing here before we roll labor shortages. Do you, do we, you know, Lee, do you think that the labor shortages, do you think we're going to continue to deal with that in the workforce? Do you see that continuing? Um, and if so, is, is there anything that, you know, you'd suggest that could be done by a business owner to maybe attract and or find, uh, find people to work with their company? Well, a few things here. I mean, one is <clears throat> uh, labor is needed to be able to complete a job. And as everyone knows that it's a combination of equipment and labor. So if you're using a guy to push a broom, go buy a big blower to make the other guy you've got that shows up more efficient. Um, I, I think there's, I think you can solve this in a few ways. I mean, if you're a big, if you're a company that spends a lot on labor, you may be able to improve your your internal processes to make people more efficient to you know to deal with it um and you may be able to buy some you know better equipment and guys like toys if they're anything like me so that's one way um as far as the actual shortage itself um yeah i mean i i think as long as as long as there's this as long as the pandemic persists and people are fully afraid of you know returning back to a new normal or in you know, whatever that looks like um i think it i think it's going to be it's going to continue to be a challenge but i think uh i think it's anybody's guess as to when that improves you know like i i can say that it's been challenging for us um we've had to put a lot more effort into hr in the last year um just be a lot more aggressive we've I guess a few tips I would give is be prepared to give answers quicker, you know, try and drag everything into the first interview forget about having the second and third. Um, it, it, you've got to be aggressive if you're going to, you know, bring people on uh, because there are a lot of people competing for the, for the few good ones that are out there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wish I knew, but I, I don't have a sense as to when this gets better. I, I have a feeling it's, it's going to be a while before we see it taper off and, and uh, unemployment rates going back to where they were. And yeah, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think it's just, it's a reality that you've got to learn to deal with. But by the way, we, we, we have written, uh, drafted a few different blog posts around this and we have done some, we've, we've built some pretty good content around that. So feel free to click the link. Uh, below to be able to get through to that content that you can go through. Hopefully it provides you with some tips there. Brian, can you chime in on that before you roll up? Yeah, I, I would add to that, man. And I, I wrote a uh, Instagram post a, a, probably a month or maybe two months back uh, that, that I got a guy that reached out to me from Entrepreneur Magazine. He wanted to use it. And the quote on the post said, you don't have a recruiting problem. You have a marketing problem. And, and the more well-known you are, the easier it is to get those employees, uh, the easier it is to get them to trust you to your point lead to close that potential sale uh, of that employee joining your company in the first interview. So again, I think it all comes down to being more well-known, letting people know who they're coming to work for before, before they even walk into your office via social media, 
and any way that you can connect with them, I think, again, makes the world smaller and allows you to pull those people that are probably most in line with your values anyway, from the message that you're constantly putting out. Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. So I really appreciate you guys being here. Just to summarize, so we're looking at basically the balance of this year, what lies ahead is essentially opportunity. You just need to be connected to the right things, stay positive, stay focused on your proposals, make sure that the proposals that you're delivering are right, the right the right average price that you're wanting to ultimately achieve to, 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 to hit your goal and to get out there and close deals, go, go out there and do, differentiate, take photos, do some selfie videos, do things that are different. Um, the second thing is expect prices to continue to trickle due to the domino effect. So you will see equipment and supplies go up in price over time. You should probably consider investing into stuff now if you need stuff before the end of the year or rolling into 2022. Invest into equipment, invest into the supplies that you maybe can store in heated environments, et cetera. If you're in a colder climate during the winter, get the funding that you need. If you don't have the money, um, money is cheap right now. Take advantage of that. And then what we want to talk and what we want to finish off on is, you know, at the end of the day, Brian, there's a, you know, you've got a marketing problem if you are unable to attract some great people in your company and, you know, showing that on social media, show, presenting the culture in your company, speaking the energy, the unique value propositions associated with your company. What are you truly about? Are you found on all platforms? Are you a respected entity? Do you have good Google reviews because you've gone out there and hunted them and now you're attracting people where they're saying, man, that's a great company to work for. And, and I would consider that over somebody who doesn't have that presence. That's kind of to summarize everybody what lies ahead. Lee, president of Rhino Works and several other companies, Mr. Brian has the payment group and also other companies. You guys, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in here. And I know that uh, the audience is going to benefit from this. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.